Hey folks, it's Lucy with Ballyhoo Creations and in this vlog for machine embroidery I want to talk about machine embroidery software. If you are shopping for embroidery software I have a secret weapon website to share with you but I'm going to get to that in a minute. First I want to talk about do you need embroidery software? The answer for a lot of people is you don't need software at all. Um, you can get designs and put them on your embroidery machine. Uh, your machine will come with designs, which you can stitch just fine. You don't need to do anything. You can also buy designs on the internet and then you load them up on a USB stick like this, transfer from your, com uh, download to your computer, computer goes onto this, and then you plug this into your machine and you stitch away. And you don't need any software for most machines to do that. Although there are some machines out there that do require software just to get it onto this stick, or maybe it's an old style card or something like that. But for most newer machines, you just put it on a USB and you don't need software um, if it doesn't come with your machine. If you do have to have software, it'll probably come with your machine and you would already have that. But as far as buying separate software, there are a lot of different brands out there that I'll, I'll show you um, how to investigate those. But most people don't need software unless you want to do things like edit designs. And I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to come over here and this is, I'm using Embird Editor actually. And with an editing software, what you can do is combine different designs together. You can split them up. You can come over here and change the colors. Um, you can resize things. Let's see. I'm new at this and that was the wrong thing to do. So you can resize things, although you do have to be careful when you resize and it'll give you warnings. Um, you can do a lot of things, change the colors over here. You can, um, some editors allow you to add text. Some of them don't, um, you have to pay extra for that. Some of them allow you to do basic shapes. Um, just all different kinds of things out there that you can do with editing software. So that's what editing software does. You can combine designs, you can add things together, you can change stitches on some softwares, um, but you can't create your own new designs with editing software. You can sometimes add text or basic shapes or things like that, depending on the software package. Some of them let you do that. Some of them you have to buy the digitizing. Digitizing is different than editing. Digitizing is creating a brand new design. And I'll show you a little bit about how that looks and I won't get too much into it. But with digitizing software, here's what that does. Now, I'm using Embird software, and that's what I use when I digitize. There are many different brands out there, but I like Embird. It's not the easiest to use, but it is the best price, and I've got more time than money, so I chose Embird. Um, but what you do when you digitize is you actually have to go and point by point build your drawing, and then you move. It's like building your own dot to dot drawing, and then you tell the software um, what kind of stitches you want. And in this case, I'm going to say, uh, let's do something kind of weird. Let's do this one. And it'll do, it'll do that. And you can see what that's going to look like in stitches. And then you can do um, running stitches is what I did here. You can do fills, you can do columns, which is the satin stitches. So that's what digitizing does. And it takes a lot of time to digitize. It takes a lot of time to learn how to digitize. So that's the difference between editing software and digitizing software. Which one do you need? It really depends on what you want to do. With digitizing software, there are also softwares that do what's called auto digitizing. A lot of people think that it's just out there and you just go take a JPEG and turn it into an embroidery file. It does not work that way. There are some programs that can do something like that. Um, some of them work better than others and some of them you don't want to stitch that on your machine. I'll get more in depth in, in a future video. I'd actually like to take different vector files and convert them using different programs and we'll take a look at, at what works and what doesn't work, but that's in the future. For now, um, I want to show you a web page on how to compare different embroidery software. So what this is, is this is a Wikipedia entry for comparing embroidery software. Very simple. You can um, see the URL up here, comparison of embroidery software. If you actually Google wiki comparison embroidery software, this is what you'll get. And it is wonderful because it's got 
so many different brands of software out there. On the far right over here, it even has the prices. Um, I'm not sure who updates this wiki, but they do a pretty good job from what I can tell. And it's just got oh, everything in there. It tells you what formats it can import and export. Um, it tells you if it runs on a Mac. Most of them don't. It tells you if some even um, are supported by Linux. It also, because it tells you the price and it tells you if it's proprietary or open source, these open source are, are the free ones. So those are worth checking out, but sometimes, you know, they work better than others. Some of them go defunct. Um, one of them I think is already gone. Ink Stitch, I'm not sure if it's still around or not, um, but I'm not gonna get too deep into that. I just wanted you to know if you're shopping, this is a good place to look at this Wikipedia page here. Look at prices. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't really tell you the features. You have to go to each website and, and look that up. And it looks like, I thought it used to have links. Some of them do have links, but most of them don't anymore. So you'd have to go and search by name and find all of those different things. Not the easiest thing in the world, but it's better than not knowing anything at all. This at least gives you the whole list of embroidery software that's out there. And then you can go and do your investigation. Most of them will give you a free trial, usually 30 days. Some of them won't let you actually stitch with that free trial, um, but I think most of them do. So go and look at their web pages, see what features they offer, and then pick a few that you think you might like and try them out. It's worth a try. Um, usually you don't, it doesn't cost anything, just go and give it a try. So that's what I wanted to say for today about embroidery software. In the future, I will dig a little bit deeper into embroidery software, but um, I have a lot of other things going on. I'd like to do a beginner um, machine embroidery for beginners series, and I'm going to start that probably in the next couple of weeks. But that means that I have to change my whole studio around to make video much, much easier, which is something I wanted to do anyway, which is why you might see like black bars and stuff around the edges of the screen because I'm still trying to figure out how to use this software. Um, but so that's one of the things that I've been working on besides embroidery is getting the videos just easier. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to record a video and I was not in the frame, I was like off like this. <laughs> or I had one that I recorded and even edited and found out the fluorescent light was flickering and it was so annoying that I couldn't even do that to you to make you watch that video, it was terrible. So yeah, that's what's been going on. Um, last week I posted a tutorial instead of a vlog post. So I'm gonna go back to the vlog and talk about what I've been doing. And I've got a uh, new designs have come out move my USB out of the way. These are the um, that I talked about before when I was working on the apple body and the banana body. So these little characters are done. Here's another version um, of the softy of this guy. And that's what has hit the shop last week. Also the chickens. Yeah. The chickens hit the shop as well. So they're at ballyhoocreations.com and this is what I'm working on now. Got this new technique where I do these little stitches lines here and it's got some shading. I think it's a little too bright from the light, but um, it's still soft, but you can tell that it's got the pink shading in there. I really love that. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do an applique nose or a stitched nose. I'm on the fence, but um, that's just a rabbit head that goes on to the same body as this one. These are the same bodies. This is just stitched in polar fleece and this has um, the shirt and pants method, but Polar Police, I don't actually do a seam anywhere in the back. I use the arms to stuff because it's so thick. Um, you don't want to break your needles on too many layers of Polar Fleece. But hopefully the Easter Bunny will be hitting the shop pretty soon. Um, maybe a week or two. I'm not really sure on that guy yet. So that's all I had for this week. I hope your week has been great. I'm glad that the cold weather is finally getting behind us and we can get back to, you know, living, stitching, all that stuff. So that's all I got for you. Go make some stuff.